Hi, I'm in Southwark in London. This area used to be the site of one of London's oldest hospitals, St. Thomas's. St. Thomas's was here for almost 700 years and had one of the country's first ever operating theatres. Have you ever had an operation? If you have, it was probably in an operating theatre like this. These modern theatres are clean, spacious and bright. As you can see, they are full of high-tech equipment and they are designed to make surgery as clean and as safe as possible. They usually have an adjustable metal operating table in the centre of the room. Above the table, there are several large fluorescent lights which allow surgeons to see everything. At the head of the table, there's an anaesthetic machine, and around the room there are various monitors, measuring heart rate, blood pressure, and blood oxygen levels. But what about old operating theatres? What were they like? Well, that's why I've come here. You see, St Thomas's old operating theatre used to be in the attic of this church. The hospital was moved from here in the 1860s. But when a historian decided to investigate the church's old attic, he found a large abandoned room containing some old-fashioned surgical equipment. Today, this room is part of the old operating theatre museum. The museum has been teaching visitors about the history of surgery for over 50 years. The first question many people ask when they come here is why is it called an operating theatre? Well, the answer is simple. As you can see, medical students used to stand here and watch the surgery, like an audience watching a play in a theatre. During operations, the room was always cramped and crowded, and the bigger and bloodier the operation, the bigger the audience. Imagine how frightening it must have been for the poor patients and they were usually quite poor. The rich had their operations at home, but the poor would tolerate the audience in order to receive surgery they would never be able to afford otherwise. The patient would lie on this uncomfortable wooden bench while the surgeon worked. There was no anaesthetic, so patients were awake throughout the procedure, unless, of course, they fainted. The surgeons were quick, they could amputate a leg in less than a minute, but they had very little understanding of hygiene. There were no antiseptics, and surgeons always wore the same coats, which were usually covered with blood from previous operations. They often used dirty instruments, which were kept on this old wooden table, and they rarely washed their hands. Below the operating table, there was a wooden box filled with sawdust or wood shavings. This collected the blood from each operation. But often there was too much blood, so in the end they built a false floor. The blood could be washed away and collected in the space between the new floor and the original floor. In such unhygienic conditions, it isn't surprising that patients often died during surgery. After the patient's death, their bones and organs were kept for further study. All of these practices seem primitive to us today, but without these techniques, we might never have developed the cleaner, safer procedures we have today. That's something we can all be grateful for.